Hi everyone and welcome. I'm about to head down to my wormery and like I did a couple days ago we're going to start here in my kitchen and it's because I've switched over to trying to use bread to bait the mites out of a couple of my systems where a huge number of mites have been kind of overrunning the situation there and I've been using a lot of different tricks to try to reduce their numbers and the most recent trick has been to try to to bait them out of the environment using either fruits and most recently bread so the bread is a little different today than it was last time if you might remember last time it had kind of a pale look to it today the bread just came out of the toaster and it's got that really scrumptious toaster toasted bread smell to it <laughs> i like it at least and um like we did before we're gonna introduce a little bit of milk to dampen it and I guess I'll try to tip it over and let the stuff rest in here for a while let it soak into the toasted bread and then we're gonna head on downstairs to check out my African nightcrawler bins where the problem has been persistent for quite a while now and even though up until now I was always using a type of bait that I could rinse and get the get all the mites off of it and put the bait back with this bread it seems more sensible just to pull the bread out toss it and replace it but today we're upgrading to toasted bread so let's take this stuff downstairs and get to work on the African nightcrawler systems get rid of these blasted mites <laughs> so I'm allowing the bread to continue soaking over here in this little pool of milk that I set up for it I guess I'll turn those pieces of bread a little bit too to let the more dry sides soak a bit too. This bread was already very very dry when I had placed it in the freezer and I placed it in the freezer to prevent it from getting moldy and even though it's been now in the toaster oven not the toaster oven the air fryer to, to get toasted it's still you know very firm and hard and I don't think it's because it was toasted I think it's already because it was just so dry. Eh, soaking a little bit of moisture into it will definitely help. And naturally what you see behind the tray with the bread in it is the two systems that we're going to be working on. These are my two African Nightcrawler systems where we've been attempting to bait the mites out of the material. And I, I skipped a day, so I was not down here yesterday to tend to these systems. So hopefully we'll see some progress today. Over here it's very hard to see because of the glare on the plastic. But one thing I'm definitely noticing is a good number of mites... I could see a good number of mites right there on the plastic itself and all over the bait. The bait still consists of what had previously been used primarily as my bait, which is a chunk of cantaloupe melon. And then more recently I had added a couple little pieces of pineapple. And then as you already know, I'm also trying to bait with bread. And I believe that just the recirculating moisture that occurs underneath the plastic also contributes a lot to the gathering of the mites coming over if nothing else than just for the moisture itself so um, like I've done before I'm going to be going in here to check out the mites get a close-up look and a little different from previously instead of trying to rinse off the bait that's in here now all this bread the bread is just going to go I'm going to trash it and replace it with the freshly prepared toasted milk soaked bread so I'm going to go put on a glove before I start fiddling too much here and get myself dirty. And then we'll, uh, and we'll get on a little bit closer on just one of these bins as we're working on it to see what we're doing. Um, so yeah, let's get started. After two days, there's a good number of mites that have collected here in the baiting area. There's bunch of them scattered all over what appears to be finished castings and those castings must have appeared here since I had reset this bait station because I don't remember piling a bunch of worm castings back into the bait area I'm sure the bait area would have just consisted of fruit and bread so thinking why don't we um I was just going to remove some of this bait 
from here as best as I could. And I thought it might be interesting just to see what the worms do to get out of the, the bright light. I'm not, I always wonder at this point, are they here for the bread or are they here for the melon? And I'm just somehow more inclined to believe that they're here for the melon. So I, I did shoot some close-up of some of this bait that I had used. Trying to see if there was stuff, you know, like any action on it, any mites, you know, or were they just ignoring it? And it did seem to me like there were a lot of them. And, um, you know, there's no way to get them out. So it's just disposal, getting rid of this stuff. You know, while I do that, I'm going to let the worms kind of evacuate this area to get out of these bright lights. Kind of let them leave on their own. Uh, and then... And then I'll come back for this piece of paper to deal with the mites on it afterwards. But hopefully we'll just give the worms a chance to get out of these bright lights on their own. And that shouldn't take too long. So let's see. I guess I expected things to happen a little more quickly here. At this rate, we'll be here all day. So I'm going to have to help these guys, I think. Help them a little bit to get detached from these castings. Because the castings are covered in mites, and I think I'm going to go rinse. Let's see, I'll rinse this paper. This paper looks like it's still in good enough shape to be reused. And the, and the mites do come off the paper quite easily when I do a rinse in the sink. And the back side of this paper has got so many of them on there. So I'm, I'm noticing in, in these time-lapse videos that these mites don't really seem to care about the bright light. So they stick around. Only the worms seem interested in diving down into the bedding to escape the bright lights. So we're going to give these, uh, I don't know, maybe another handful of these castings that are really filled with a bunch of mites and we'll see about getting rid of the worms because everything else that stays on this cantaloupe rind is going to the sink and getting rinsed and I guess while I'm busy doing that I guess we can give these guys a little chance to dive down now that there's actually dirt below them or you know some sort of a medium for them to dive into should be a little easier than when they were piled up on top of that piece of paper. So let's get things cleaned up a bit and I'll be back momentarily. That's more like it. I'm back from the sink. It's only been a few minutes and I hardly see any worms over here. Look at this piece of cantaloupe brine that we've been using as like our platform for setting up our bait stations. It's so cool how they've ripped through the majority of it and there's still just this really thin outer transparent layer that um, they've not yet done away with as well as like that interesting pattern that makes up the cantaloupe rind. So much the way we found it when we got here. I want to make sure I position our bait low enough so that I so that I could use this plastic as a cover and that the cover is not propped up by the the bait. So hopefully by pushing it down a little bit like this, we get it low enough that it won't um, be in the way of our plastic covering being nice and flush. So at this point the pineapple bits, I didn't really take note as to where they were. Interesting. I usually don't lose track of stuff like that. <laughs> so, I mean, there were pineapple bits out here being used as bait. Um, oops, I forgot about our paper. And I would, I would say that maybe doing without the paper is fine, but it does seem like it ends up being a spot where so many of the mites end up. 
that to lose that opportunity to get them to all gather on the paper even is um, kind of a shame to let that opportunity slip by without taking advantage of it so I just want to make sure I don't forget anything critical and I do believe that the paper is a critical success factor for sure and look at that the pineapple rind and the paper just match up so nicely as far as their shape goes anyway right <laughs> oh man okay well back goes our bait station with a fresh supply of bait otherwise there's not much else going on on this container to keep moisture in everywhere else the moisture is being left to you know flash off and maybe make the environment a little bit drier and unlikely for um, mites to want to be in it and have them drawn to the, the more damp space in the middle all right so that's where we stand so far definitely looks like there's some reduction in numbers let's get the other system out here and then we can give it this other chunk of bread that I've got here soaking for them here in the vermi bag tote we're going to be finding a very similar setup with one little minor exception which is what you see right here the plastic covering things to help help restore moisture to the overall environment because in this bin things did get very very dry around the outer edges i believe so uh allowing things to rehydrate a bit is going to be beneficial here so the worms are coming out to take advantage of that moisture out on top of these pieces of paper on which i don't see any mites so even though there's dampness here doesn't seem to be a haven for the mites like it is down in our baiting area. It could have something to do with just that melon. The melon could very well be our, you know, major attractor in here. So what else? I'm just trying to see if we're not going to leave any worms out here on the surface to dry off and be very uncomfortable. Hopefully it'll be able to just sense that things are getting a bit too dry and they'll crawl off. I don't know, on this piece of plastic, I don't see that many mites, really. I guess I'm just going to assume that the bread probably does have mites on it at this point. Hopefully it does. And I believe that here, too, even though it might be far more deteriorated, or maybe not, we'll see. There's more cantaloupe rind. Ooh. It feels like it wants to tear just from me tugging on one or the other edge of it. <laughs> it's hard, very difficult to tell if there's mites on this or what, just because of the massive amount of worms that have piled onto it. Besides giving this bin a plastic covering, I've also applied a, a feeding. I believe that's probably been about a week or so ago at this point, right beneath here. So here's some more stuff we used as bait, here's some pineapple. Here the pineapple was really easy to spot. But yeah, the food that I placed in there was, my, my hope was that it would draw the worms to the food down below the bedding, um, down within the system, buried down an inch or so. It's, um, there's a whole bunch of grapes that I squished, so there should be a nice juicy area down there for the, the worms to be attracted to. And this one worm, I can't figure out where the heck he's at. Maybe it's this guy. <laughs> trying to evict all these worms because I want to flush off the mites that might be on this piece of cantaloupe. But I, I do feel like the overall numbers are just far lower here, just from an initial view and just from what's on the castings. But you know what? My secret weapon, I guess, we'll take a look at it through the eyes of the time-lapse camera. Because it's only that way can I actually observe some of the movement of this um, wildlife. Because some of it is just so slow moving. So let me switch over to time lapse. Let it shoot a little bit of this. And this will give me a better sense as to how the bread's performing, I think. And just in the number of remaining mites that are still in this system. In general, based on what we see. So let's, uh, let's check that out. Now this has been the system where it did appear like the numbers had started significantly dropping. 
And even though it's very difficult for me to see what, if anything, is on this piece of bread, I think I'm just going to trust that it probably has mites on it and it's time to get rid of it. <laughs> um, the paper here, the paper that we pulled aside did not seem to have too many mites on it with the exception of the ones that ran off the bait that we placed on top of it. But I'm going to, I guess we're going to just give these things another rinse like we've been doing and reuse them to put that fresh toasted bread on top of. And, um, and this will simply go out, getting rid of that. So the only other thing that was down here that I kind of forgot about was the piece of paper on which we'd been resting our bait station. And at this point I thought I would just place it under the bait station and let it serve as a, a form of bedding for the worms that do collect down there. I kind of thought it would have a, a higher moisture level to it. It's only been down there for a couple days, but it's um, it's just there for the worms. So let me collect these things that I'm going to do away with. And I guess while we're away, we'll let the time lapse run one more time here to see what these worms do. Now here too you can see it's amazing how the the material's just been nibbled down to where there's just that crazy pattern on the on the rind as well as the very see-through outer film. There's just a little bit of the meaty stuff remaining on here. But uh, I was looking at this piece of paper here, and while it's kind of nice that we're providing the worms with a little bit of bedding, and I guess we'll we'll just keep going that way and we'll let them have a piece of it. I wanted to also include a piece of this paper along with our bait because it does seem like a nice damp piece of paper does attract a good number of mites and by not having that as our bait anymore by having moved this paper down underneath the bait station I um, wonder if we're missing an opportunity to collect even more mites so whatever like I said I'm going to leave this little chunk of it down here and let the let the worms use that as, you know, bedding or carbon or whatever they want. And I, uh, this must be some of the grapes that I had <laughs> fed. I was trying to figure out what that was when I touched on it earlier. So, this is going to go back down now that we've salvaged a couple of those pieces of paper that I wanted. Right, so in comes our new fresh piece of milk-soaked bread along with whatever milk was still sitting in there in the tray too. Let's dump it all right in here. Hopefully it works. And I'm also going to add this paper. Not sure how to best do this. So if we put it on the side, we'll know that they're coming for the paper, not for the bait. <laughs> they're not kind of integrated into each other. If they're sort of separate objects, maybe it'll tell us something, right? The mites like it damp, so I'm making that paper damp. And back goes our cover. In the case of this cover, I didn't rinse it. I didn't really see too many mites on there. So it does feel to me like progress is definitely being made here in the older of the two systems. And I just don't know what to really expect from those grapes down or that are down low. I'm, I'm just hoping that I didn't really just trigger a, a movement of the mites down into the bed to go get that those grapes that are down in there. The grapes were intended to kind of give the worms in here a break. Give them some nice damp food to nibble on. Give them their plastic covering back to let their whole environment dampen up a little bit. But you know, next time I'm in here, it might be worthwhile um, to check. Because um, while it looks like we're making good improvements here, I'd hate to think that I'm actually just masking the problem by giving the mites someplace else to go by putting grapes down low for them. <laughs> but we'll, we'll save that for the next check-in and uh, for now, we're just going to assume that we're still doing pretty good. Everything always seems like we're kind of getting a little closer and closer to having fewer and fewer and hopefully eventually virtually no mites. So that's it for today. Um, I'm going to put all these things away and get things cleaned up, but that's not fun. Before I go, though, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, 
As always, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.